Hi, this is Pat Love from Love Healing Hearts, <clears throat> here to talk about power. Listen to this. <laughs> I hope this encourages you, because a lot of times people in churches don't really hear about these subjects. I really don't know why we avoid them. It makes no sense to me. This is the kind of information we really need to have, especially when we're trying to get victory. Now, I want you to hear this. And I am going to read this beautiful scripture to you. And then we're going to, the message is going to be Pat's Two Cents. So, listen it. Okay, now we are going to read from Isaiah chapter 61. And the reason I'm reading this is because it gives us a, uh, an understanding of the authority Jesus had. Sometimes we don't get the amount of authority he had. But listen to this. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. What are you bound with? Okay, number two, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. And they shall build the old waste places. Restoration. Oh, that's my two cents. They shall raise up former desolations, and they shall repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations. Ah, it just seems like sometimes our families even go through things where it's from bad to worse, bad to worse. Generation to generation, it gets worse and worse. Daddy went to jail, son or grandson goes to jail. Mama uh, uh, gets uh, poor choices of men, daughter or grandkids you know, pick poor choices for men, and they all seem to have the same sad characteristics. I'm telling you, it's almost like recycled drama. But anyway, listen, uh, this is the kind of authority Jesus has over this. Now, the reason I read Isaiah 61 is because it's more of an in-depth view of what Jesus would call, was called to do in our lives. And as, excuse me, Luke chapter 4 says it. That's exactly what he says, where he actually sits in the temple, in the synagogue, and he recites that same verse. But later on now, check this out. This is what I love. Uh, in Luke chapter 4, the same chapter, uh, not exactly the chronological order, but Luke chapter 4, verse 33. This is what happens when he comes from the wilderness in power, filled with the Holy Spirit, having fasted 40 days and 40 nights and being tempted of the devil and wins. Listen to what happens. And in the synagogue, there was a man which had a spirit of an unclean devil and cried out with a loud voice, saying, Let us alone! What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. And when the devil had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him and hurt him not. And they were all amazed and spake among themselves, saying, What a word is this? 
For with authority and power he commandeth the unclean spirits, and they come out. Huh. Yeah. Jesus had authority, y'all. It wasn't anything to play with. And this is the beautiful part. We have access to his authority by using his name. If we have accepted him into our hearts as our Lord and Savior, our Lord and Savior, not just our Savior, our Lord and Savior, which means we have relinquished control and given it all to him. Mm, yeah, well, once we do that, we're filled with the Holy Spirit and, you know, baptized and all of that, boy. The authority we start finding in the name of Jesus is phenomenal. I'm going to share a few with you because I believe in sharing things that have to do with our daily, everyday, I mean, yeah, that's redundant, our daily lives. Okay. Now, I'm going to share a few experiences I've had. And you see how he delivered the man from an unclean spirit. Okay. I'm going to share a few things I got delivered from. I got delivered from a two-pack-a-day, 15-year cigarette habit. Boom, just like that. When I rebuked the desire, I felt something physical. I had no idea it was there at the time. Jump off my chest, and the desire was gone. And I never had to battle temptation for cigarette smoking since. Didn't go through withdrawal either. Hmm. That's the power of the name of Jesus. And you know, a lot of times when you go through your life and you think, well, this has just been a bad habit. I've done this so long. It's just a part of me. No, baby. Jesus can cut that umbilical cord so quick, but you have to be willing to use his name and take the chance to do so. Do you hear what I'm saying? Don't be so quick to feel like, well, this is my lot in life. I'm just stuck with this. No, you're not. If you have Jesus in your heart, you have the name of Jesus to use, baby. And you swipe that card, call his name, and guess what? Them bad boys got to go. Now, the only reason they won't go is if you have given them permission to stay. Because sometimes we as human beings want to keep some of these habits because they titillate our flesh. And we don't think we can do without them without feeling lost. And let me tell you, when you really get delivered and your mind's made up, you won't miss it. You look back at that stuff like, whew, no thank you. It takes a while though. Not as far as not being tem tempted. It takes a while to get to the point where you see the difference of what life is without. And you realize, wow, I don't have that ball and chain around my neck anymore. I'm really free. Okay, here's another one. All right. Uh, I had asked the Lord. I, I was one of those people. You know how they say the little foxes spoil the vine. One of my little foxes is going to sound comical. I was addicted to chocolate addicted every single day now it's not a sinful thing but anything good or bad that controls you is not of God you're not supposed to be controlled by anything or anybody okay now I had when I say I had to or it was definite the day could not, a 24 hour period could not go by without me having my fix. I had to have a chocolate something, chocolate shake, chocolate candy, chocolate hot cocoa, something chocolate had to pass my lips, baby. I was going to have to make a way to, to satisfy that, 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 <clears throat> that stronghold. I rebuked the desire. I rebuked the habit. I rebuked the uh, habitual thing, uh, the the uh, addiction to chocolate. I mean, I didn't expect anything. I just rebuked. And I had a book, and you guys be good to buy this book called Pigs 
in the parlor. Not expensive because it's old. Look it up on Amazon. Pigs in the parlor. See a bunch of spiral and a little pig, a couple of pig heads in the center. Well, this book tells you all about how you can be delivered, how to do deliverance, and how to break free from strongholds that we thought were normal in our lives. Okay, do you know when I got through rebuking that thing, I got up, didn't expect to have anything happen, and I started crying. I said, now what the heck am I crying about? It's chocolate, for, for goodness sake. I picked up the Pigs in the Parlor book. I said, let me see what the what the experience is, the different types of things that happen when you get delivered. And I'm flipping pages and I get to the point, you know, and I'm reading and one of the symptoms, a couple of symptoms, coughing, several actually, coughing is one, uh, sneezing is another, nose running, oh yeah, I mean these things are crazy, puking, that's another one, um, it's, it's, it's several. And the other one was crying. I didn't expect to have a response to it at all. But do you know from that day on, I could have chocolate if I wanted. If I didn't want it, I didn't have to. I could go days, weeks, months and not miss it. No longer a habitual stronghold. God broke me free. Just using the name of Jesus. So what I'm trying to tell you is when you really, really want to get rid of something, your mind is made up. Now, I'm not talking about a double mind where, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe not. No, you really have to want this thing gone. And when you rebuke that baby in the name of Jesus, it's gone. You will feel the difference. See the results of the difference if you don't feel anything. I didn't feel anything when I rebuked the chocolate. I just started crying, and that seemed kind of crazy to me. But guess what? The desire. I never craved chocolate again to this day. And I did that. It had to be about 28, 29 years ago. I had been saved a few years and didn't realize till after I read that book that I was addicted to chocolate and I could be delivered. Mm -hmm. So anything that has control, even relationships, you guys, when you find yourself stuck to a relationship and you can't break loose, and whether the guy is nice or whether he's mean to you or the sex is good and you feel like you're bound to that sex and whatever it is, you just can't seem to cut this man loose or you men, you can't cut that woman loose. They they embarrass you in public. They front you off. Drama, drama, drama. They're jealous. They're, they're confrontational, argumentative, whatever. And you are steadily, you know this is bad news. But you can't cut all that sweet stuff loose. Yeah, you're bound, baby. When you're out of control like that, you need to be delivered, and you need to take authority. You have the authority. That is called a demonic stronghold trying to latch you in so it can control your life through a human being. The human being is just a little mannequin, but the devil is the one actually doing the, the dastardly deed to you. So you take authority, baby. You tell you say, I rebuke you in the name of, this is what you rebuke. You rebuke the desire for whatever it is you're bound to. You hear me? You rebuke the desire for it. You rebuke the habit. You rebuke the addiction. You rebuke the lust. You rebuke whatever it is. Call it what it is. Don't play with it. Don't try to justify and rationalize it and make yourself come out smelling like a rose. If it's nasty, it's nasty. You call it what it is. If it makes you feel like you're weak, then call that what it is. Because the strength is not in, in ignoring it. Your strength is in facing it and dealing with it. And then you are operating in the power of God in the strength of the Lord and in the power of his might when you turn to the supernatural to get your deliverance. 
because only the supernatural of God and the name of Jesus and the word will get you free. But you have to first make the choice. And if your choice is not solid, if your mind's not made up, trust me, you can rebuke till uh, until you're, you're spitting out your teeth and you won't get free because you don't want to. But you got to be honest with yourself. You hear me? You can break free. Here's another thing. I was walking down the street during mating season. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, now I've had this experience when I was unsaved. And let me tell you, I knew how to cuss, baby. I knew how to cuss and I had a very big mouth. Okay, I came from back east, so I know how to talk loud. But let me tell you this. No matter how much I kissed, I, I cussed. <laughs> no matter how much I swung and I kicked. No matter how loud I got. Those dogs didn't stop. I've been attacked by packs of dogs three times in my life. And the last time I was saved, I had the Lord Jesus Christ in my heart. Okay? And I knew the power of his name. Now, I hadn't tried it in the natural like that. But that's all I had to work with. So guess what? I used it, taking a chance that I might still be attacked. And I hollered, I rebuke, no, I said, I bind you in the name of Jesus. You know, those dogs stopped like, they were like, huh, where was I going? Oh, oh, well, I forgot where I was going to go and do. Well, I guess I'll tiptoe back where I came from. And just as fast as they walked around me, they just started scattering as if I had, they had no, they didn't act as if there were, there was any awareness in them that I was even in their midst any longer. It was as if I just disappeared. That was bizarre. But guess what? I didn't get a bite, didn't get a scratch, didn't get touched. The name of Jesus worked. Another time, I was walking at night, and there was a pit bull. And I knew that pit bull was supposed to be on that long chain when I was going to visit my buddy down in the back house. And she didn't hear me because she, she had her TV going. But I'm walking past this man's house, and I'm making sure that the pit bull is on the chain, and the pit bull ain't even in the yard. So I'm figuring, I'm hoping against all hope, he's in the house. Well, guess what? I start hearing, shh, and I'm like, oh, no. And I can't see where he's coming from. It's so dark. And I hollered, I bought you in the name of Jesus. You know, that dog dug his nails. I heard him into the cement to stop himself. And he skidded across the cement and landed on his backside in a seated position and stayed put. And I wasn't moving either. I just kept whispering, I bind you in the name of Jesus. I, I'm looking like this. Look, I bind you. The dog is right there. I bind you in the name of Jesus. I bind you in the name of Jesus. I bind you and I'm so scared I don't know what to do. And he's looking up at me fixed. But he ain't moving and he ain't biting. Pit bull. The owner heard my big mouth and looked to see what was happening and called the dog in. And I made it safely. The power of Jesus' name. I'm telling you guys, it works. The name of Jesus works. There is power. <sighs> okay, I'm done for that right now. But I just say that to say, you guys, I don't care if it's masturbation, pornography, if it's lust, if it's X-rated movies, if it's women, if it's boys, if it's girls, if it's kids, if it's adultery, if it's drugs, if it's alcohol, I don't care what it is. Rebuke that bad boy. You take authority. You got it. It was given to you. Take it. Use it. And break free in the name of Jesus. You hear me? You break free. Don't settle for that. Don't be the devil's flunky. Flunky. <laughs> no. Nah. You break free and get your freedom. And I, I rebuke your bondage in the name of Jesus. Amen.